Well, Merry Squigmas there, Mark. What? Oh, hey, yeah, thanks, Uncle Letty. You, you too. I got you something. Aw, oh, gee, thanks, Uncle Letty. You didn't have to, but I, I appreciate it. Welcome back to the Red Ones Go Faster. I'm Old Big Mac, and don't be on Uncle Eddie this year. Old Big Mac's going to give you the 10 best gifts to give for somebody who's into Warhammer, who either already has everything, or if you don't know how to shop for them. Let's get into it! All right, before we dive too deep into this video, uh, yes, this is 10 gift ideas for the Warhammer fan in your life. And I want to preface this by saying none of these are sponsored. Uh, nobody reached out to me. I didn't reach out to anybody. These are all things I legitimately want, <laughs> have, <laughs> um, that have been gifts from family and friends in the past or things that I've given to friends and family that are into Warhammer um, and just things that are really good ideas. Obviously, as we all know, this hobby, as cool and fun as it is, if you don't know exactly the right thing that you're gifting to somebody, well, you know, it, it might not come across great. Because if Space Dorks isn't their army, you know, <laughs> it's not going to get the reaction that you want. And also, there's a lot of Warhammer adjacent things that, you know, aren't quite the same thing. So if you're not real sure what to get, or they already have everything, definitely watch. Now, I will say there are affiliate links in the description below that are just for Amazon only. It doesn't cost you any extra. Uh, if you see something on here that you do want to get, you can click on those links. Uh, it brings you to Amazon and they throw a couple of cents my way. That's it. But the, the, Amazon's not a sponsor. None of the products are sponsored. Uh, and none of the other uh, channels or things or, or people that I'm mentioning. Um, again, these are all things that I legitimately enjoy and I think would make for an excellent squigmas for the Warhammer fan in your life. So we're going to start with number one right now. And for that, we have to come here to the workbench. See, there is something that every person that builds Warhammer models is going to want and need all the time. And that's called consumables. Basically, when you're doing this hobby, when you're building things, painting things, there are certain supplies that you just use up. It's just a natural part of what's going on. Uh, things like X-Acto knife blades, they get dull and worn out and you have to change them. So some extra X-Acto knife blades always goes a long way. It's very helpful. Uh, things like sanding sticks, you use these to sand off mold lines and things like that. These wear out, you need some new ones. These are great stocking stuffers. Glue is an always, always in demand item, whether it's uh, some extra thin cement for the plastic or some gel uh, super glue for the resin and other harder bits. We're always going through it. We always need it. You can never have enough backups of it because, well, you're going to run out when you're building and painting all the time. So these kind of consumable items are a great idea. If you're kind of unsure on exactly what consumables to get, take a little gander at the desk. I'm sure you'll be able to spot the pot of glue and figure out what brand of glue they use. Um, and then there's other things as well that are part of that consumable list, uh, whether it's weathering powders, uh, diorama acrylic stuff, and especially these little buggers, the, uh, the little grass tufts. If you use these in your army, you go through them pretty fast, so you should be able to kind of find one lying around see which one is theirs and grab one for their stocking. I'm sure it will be greatly appreciated. So any kind of hobby consumable that you can see on the workbench area is a great idea. Another one that I really like, uh, as, again, even to receive, is cheap brushes. These are workhorses. These are the kind of things you use for glopping on stuff like the paste, doing uh, weathering, stuff that's really hard on your good brushes. We don't want to use our good brushes for that, so a handy supply of cheap brushes to do things like spread glue around and, and whatnot where they can just be thrown away is always welcome. So having packs of this stuff around is great. Now number two, we're staying here at the modeling desk and that is paint. Uh, again, if you're painting Warhammer, you go through a lot of paint, you're gonna need some new paint. So if it's somebody that 
paints kind of the same army over and over again and they've got a favorite color that they're using up a lot, um, always a good idea to get that color. Uh, personally, I'm one of those people that has a bunch of different brands of paint and I don't really have one particular color that I go through because I paint so many different things. For the person like me, looking at kind of the paints that they like and getting some special effects, I think is the best move. So uh, things like the Tamiya clear paints, these are really fun for doing glass effects um, and really interesting um, glossy type things um, that might not be in their regular arsenal. Um, actual metalizer paints, these are great for true metallic metal things. Um, they've got a really fun one called uh, Exhaust buff right here so it uh, you put it on the exhaust system and it looks like naturally burned exhaust really cool effect um, dirty down makes this rust stuff that's been really popular verdigris um, any kind of metallic like that your your golds and your silvers and your brasses can always be fun as well as any kind of weathering or special effect if you see something that says you know rust or dust or snow or whatever on it um, and it's a brand that, that your hobbyist person loves, I'm sure it will be greatly appreciated. And again, makes an excellent stocking stuffer. You can throw one down there in the bottom. All right, the final one here at the workbench is, well, staring at you right in the face. It's lighting. You can never have enough light. I have every light I own in this room and turned on, and well, it's still not bright enough. And there's all sorts of options. You've got these swinging arm things with the ring lights. This one's especially cool. It's got a magnifying glass built into it for when you're an old Big Mac like me. Uh, these LED lamps, any kind of light that you can get to put some directional light on the workspace is going to be appreciated. So take a look at your person's hobby desk and see what their lighting situation looks like. Could they use a nice big lamp? Could they use a little spot lamp? Could they use some more background lighting? Something like that is actually a really thoughtful gift that will be highly appreciated by the pain in your life. All right, that's enough for the work desk. Let's go see what else there is. Now this next one is a pretty easy category and that's your merchandising stuff. Obviously there are things like stickers out there that you can get for your hobbyist and well, t-shirts. <laughs> yes, this is my design. You can get it uh, down at our Teespring below, but this is not the only design by far. There's a bunch of other YouTube channels that actually have fantastic Artwork that you can get is t-shirts or stickers or even art prints. Um, I'm particularly fond of Squidmar. They have some excellent designs that are very different and fun. Um, Eons of Battle has some cool stuff. Adeptus Ridiculous, uh, Trapped Under Plastic, um, and then even uh, Games Workshop themselves. They actually have a really excellent selection of t-shirts that are customizable. This one right here, they actually make in like five or six different colors. Um, and they have a few kid shirts. Their uh, Merchoid or whatever it is uh, website actually has a lot of fun, different things like that. I would say if you're unsure what to get, you don't know what size somebody is. And, and again, this can be like their army. You don't necessarily know what their favorite is. Um, art prints is a really fun one. So these are actually from Games Workshop themselves. And well, look at that. Like, even if that's not your army, that's a pretty darn cool art print. And they actually sell these as sets too. So for example, this particular um, package has multiples. So they've, you've got a Titan there. Uh, you've got, this is a uh, Stormcast Eternal from Age of Sigmar. Uh, you've got some classic just battlefield imagery. Um, I think that's it yeah but artwork is always a good thing if you're unsure anything john blanche uh is always a good idea i haven't ever met a warhammer fan that doesn't like john blanche artwork if you don't know what i'm talking about it looks like this big epic usually lots of yellow and orange in there just so honking cool so anything that looks like this i guarantee you is going to like Bring some nostalgia out and make your Warhammer fan very happy indeed. I should mount that on the wall. All right, this next one, again, this is a gift I have personally given uh, multiple Warhammer fans in my life, including all the way back in my childhood uh, with one of my cousins, and that is the gift of storage. You see, 
when you have Warhammer, you end up with a lot of it, and then you need to like take it to the Warhammer store, or your local hobby store for a tournament or a game, and you need something to carry it in. There are a myriad of storage options, things that you can use to bring your armies around safely. I actually have an entire video dedicated to it with like, I don't know, eight or 10 different uh, storage things that I personally own, and again, can recommend and show you the pluses and minuses of. I'm going to link that in a video that'll be up here somewhere uh, with a little card on it. You'll also find it down in the description below. If you want to know more about the storage, definitely check out that video and take a look and see what your Warhammer person has. If they're into foam cases, stick with foam cases. If they have a menagerie, maybe look to get them something a little different um, after watching that video that might suit their needs a little better. Now, if your Warhammer person has all the storage in the world, um, or maybe just their stuff is scattered everywhere, but they never go to the store to play a game, there is one very obvious thing. Display case. Now, obviously buying a giant piece of furniture is a big deal, not something that should be done lightly. I'm assuming this would be more like a partner that you're getting the present for instead of a buddy or, or a, you know, a child or something like that. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a ginormous display case either. There are these really cool little miniature cases to hold like a single model or a squad of models that can like go up on a shelf. Those are really, really awesome. Um, Artist Opus did a really cool wall mount display of these little shelves that you can get lighted and everything that are super rad and again that becomes army agnostic it doesn't matter which particular warhammer game they're into or which particular warhammer army you get them a fun little display cabinet they can put it on their wall or on their shelf put their favorite mini in there they are going to absolutely love that always a super cool idea now uh this next one number seven is a little bit off the uh the path here but follow me and that's a collectible miniature and I don't mean like a new collectible I mean like old school vintage especially if again your Warhammer person is a little older like old Big Mac here um, basically anything that rubs our or, you know, pushes our nostalgia buttons is going to be super awesome and again it can be kind of hard to know what they would like or what they um, you know might necessarily want um, so there's some options. My favorite here in the United States is called Mind Taker Miniatures. They're one of my uh, local hobby stores, but they specialize in trade-ins on used stuff. And they have a ton of vintage things like this, and they ship across the country. So you can pick them up, uh, like say a gift certificate to that store. They can then use that to go online and cruise and find a really cool uh, vintage miniature that you can't get new. I know that there are other businesses like that elsewhere in the world. Um, in the UK, Murfield is definitely uh, the most known. I know that there's like a Red Crimson Games. I think that they serve Canada. Um, so basically, wherever you are in the world, try to find you know your uh, store that does trade-ins and vintage stuff uh, and either pick up a vintage item if you do happen to know exactly which faction your friend is into uh, and if not think about getting them a gift card to something that's a little different than just a games workshop card now if you really want to go all out pull out all the stops you need to get your person something that is just extraordinary this year well there's something called a dream model, and every Warhammer player has it, even if they already own a dream model. And what that is, is some big, important, special, almost unobtainable feeling model. And every faction has it. If you're an Orc player, it's a Stampa. You're not really an Orc player until you own at least one Stampa. If you're Imperial Guard, it's a Bane Blade. Uh, if you're Space Marines, it's the Primarch of your chapter. If you're into Age of Sigmar, it might be one of those really awesome giant dragons. The point is, they're going to have something that they lust after. And if you can kind of get that information out of them, you could pick that up for them. That would be really cool. And, you know, that's one of those things where, you know, you can kind of nose over and look at the minis on the workbench or on the shelf and be like, oh, these are pretty cool, you know? Like, is there, like, some... You know, what is this? What's their biggest one? What's the, you know, kind of come up with your own sly little questions if, to figure out what it is. If there's something they're really after, they might have been telling, like, people or the world for a while. Like, oh, man, this YouTube video on this Titan, I really want to whatever Titan, you know. Uh, you can kind of get that figured out. 
And if you're unsure, but you know which faction they are, like space dorks here, <laughs> go in and talk to your friendly local game store or your Warhammer store and go, hey, my person is into such and such a faction. What is the dream model for that? And they can help you get that figured out. It's going to be big. It's going to be pricey, but it's going to make somebody very, very, very happy this Christmas. All right, if a dream model isn't something that you know about or is out of the budget for this year, that's totally fine. This next one, number nine, is guaranteed to make the gamer in your life happy, and that's a new battlefield. You see, it doesn't matter what army you have, it doesn't matter what game you play, you need something to play it on. And, well, even if you've already got one, having options is always a good thing. Now, there's two major kinds of pre-made battlefield out there. One is, well literally a battlefield. This particular one is direct from Games Workshop and what they are are these really heavy boards uh, that come pre uh, kind of designed and they fold out uh, and then you put them together and you play on them. These are fun because they're portable. Uh, you've got two different sides to them for options. They are already the correct legal size for the game so that makes it really easy if you're trying to be, you know, 100% up and up on the rules and do exactly what the game says. And they're relatively affordable. Um, even the full-size battlefield like this isn't really that much money and they last a good long time. I got one of these for one of my Grotz last Squigmas and he uses it just about every day. He takes it out, he unfolds it, he puts all his little Warhammer guys on it, he moves them all over the place, rolls a bunch of dice on them and folds back up, puts it back away. Um, and it's still hanging in there strong. So, you know, these, these are a good option. The other option that's a little pricier and a little harder to buy for are neoprene mats. Now, uh, this particular mat is from Table War. Uh, I have a couple, maybe three of their mats. I really like these. Um, the hard part with these is, uh, you only get the one side. Right, the other side's got the grippy texture on it, so you need to know what kind of battlefield your person is actually going to want to play on. So uh, generally, I try to match the bases, right? So all of my uh, orcs are on a desert, um, kind of Mad Max looking wasteland, so I have one of these that's like that. My Imperial Guard are on a Arctic tundra, um, but not totally frozen over just snow, right? So this particular uh, green and snowy actually matches that quite well. So take a look at the bases on the army for the person you're buying for and you can get an idea of what kind of mat they would like. Um, kind of the, the other problem with these is, well, they get a little big, <laughs> they get a little clumsy, and then you got to uh, roll them up and unroll them all the time to play with them. They get kind of curled on the edges if they sit too long. Uh, so if you're not using it all the time, you have to kind of take it out like I just did and unroll it and then roll it back up the other way to kind of keep it evened out. So there's a little bit more like care uh, and feeding that goes into one of these, but they are extremely, extremely nice. Um, I enjoy playing on neoprene way more than the boards. The boards are fine, um, but they're a little glossy, so you get light reflections. Um, and often the printing on them includes things like terrain pieces that, you know, falls flat because they're literally flat in 2D versus these mats tend to have um, the printing of just ground on them. And, it, and the, the matte texture works really well with the matte paint that we use on the miniatures and our 3D terrain. So um, given a choice, I, I would take a neoprene over the board any day. Uh, but the boards are nice for a nice quick game. And speaking of terrain, that is actually my number 10 thing, terrain. Every wargamer needs something to fight over, and even if you have a large collection of terrain, more terrain is always a good idea. It gives you something different to fight over. It gives you more options for playing your games, and terrain pieces can be pretty compact, pretty large, and even bigger. In fact, terrain can get very, very complicated, so they are gonna be their whole own separate video which will be the next one I'll be publishing on the channel. So if you wanna know more about terrain, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button and catching that next video, because there's a lot to go over here. But in general, for the purposes of this video, figure out what game system your person plays and grab a box terrain for that. So if they're into Warcry, get a Warcry kit. If they're into Kill Team, get a Kill Team kit. 
they're into Warhammer 40k, get them a Warhammer 40k kit, and I guarantee it will always be happy because it doesn't matter what army you play, they're willing to fight over anything. So terrain, always a good buy. So that's going to do it for this video. That's 10 different gift ideas for you to buy the Warhammer fan that either already has everything or you're just not sure what they play because they really don't want to get any Warhammer space dorks. Trust me. Actually, take that back. I might actually kind of want to build that. Anyways, that'll do it for the whole video. Uh, again, if you want to see options of these or get ideas of what they look like, there will be links down below. Um, the Amazon links will be affiliate links. It doesn't charge you any extra, but it makes, you know, Daddy Bezos have to send old Big Mac some money. Uh, so that's always appreciated. The other ones to some of the other channels and things I've talked about today, again, no affiliate at all. They have no idea. They're not sponsoring this. If you feel like helping out and you order something from them, just let them know old Big Mech sent you, and maybe they will sponsor a video in the future, and that would be pretty cool. Um, other than that, if you do want to support the channel, you can like, uh, subscribe. Consider joining us on Patreon, where we talk about way more in-depth stuff than just here on YouTube. And again, there's always the Red Squid Gives You Why merch, uh, which is my own original design. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this one. I hope you have a very happy holiday season. This video is going live on uh, Thanksgiving, and I hope that you have a good one with your family and friends. And hopefully this will help you give the Warhammer fan in your life a very Merry Squidmas. <laughs>